So in this video we are going to be orientating ourselves using our compass and so that's going to be the focus of this rather than using the land like we did in our last video and so we'll look at orientating yourself using a compass then we'll look at how to care and look after your compass and its features and the kind of introduction on how to use it then in our next video we're going to look at bearings and triangulation and some of those more advanced compass techniques so here we're going to look at the parts of a compass and the first thing is the base plate so this is the large bottom section of the compass on our base plate we have a arrow of direction of travel the next part of our compass is the bezel and so this can turn around inside the bezel we have some orientating lines which we will line up with the grid lines most often and then we have this arrow here and this is the orientating arrow it's colloquially called the shed and the magnetic needle is often called Fred and so we put red Fred in the red shed that's one of the techniques we'll use over the course of we have our little line here which is matching up with our direction of travel arrow so that one is what we can give a reading for the degrees from north the final part which you can see in the bottom just uh, there are a second set of declination lines in the bottom if you're in this one location a lot you can change the declination there and that means that your compass is set up for a particular location for the whole time and so you don't have to keep on adding or minusing off magnetic variations to the grid lines when you're navigating parts which we've looked at already are the scales on the side so we've got a 1 to 50 1 to 25 and then a regular ruler in centimeters there got a magnifying glass if desired and a place to attach a string so this is kind of the basic setup of a, a compass which will allow you to do navigation for hiking a couple of things to care for your compass the compasses are pretty robust and they do slowly wear out some of the lines over time as you can see on this one but the most important things are to make sure that the bezel is twisting freely and that it's not got grit in the back of there and so you can uh, take that out and clean the grit out of there if you needed to then the most important thing is we want our magnetic needle to retain its orientation to north ways we can lose that are by say swinging your compass round uh, round and round on the end of a string and so that can change the magnetic needle a little bit or storing it near objects that have metal or magnetism associated with them so there when i bring it up to my watch you can see magnetic field of the watch is altering the magnetic needle and so if i left this compass against my watch for a really long period of time it would slowly alter the magnetism in the compass declination is an adjustment which we have to make to account for the difference between true north, grid north, and magnetic north. So we'll start with true north. So true north is the axis on which the earth rotates and spins around. So the earth is a sphere spinning around a central axis and that is at the top and the bottom of the sphere there. As the earth spins around, the central point on which it's spinning is what we call true north. Grid North is the lines which we then map onto the world. Depending on how you map these lines onto the sphere, you get differences between True North and the Grid North. If we have an image that looks spherical, this is going to account for the variation. So if I follow this line up, it's going to take me to True North as well as being orientated for Grid North. Most of our maps are not set up in this way I use a different projection called the Mercata projection with the Mercata projection we have cut the earth in half then stretched out the whole sphere across the map and this is what we end up with as our projection what happens is that the top and bottom sections of the map get really stretched out because as we can see in our image here is all grid squares need to be spread over the entire top section of our map in the Mercata projection. So that leads to a difference between the grid north and the true north, which is the point 
that the Earth is spinning on. And for this projection, that point is actually the entire line along the top and bottom, because if we were to fold this up into a sphere, then this central top and bottom part would be the same all along, and you'd have to make little cuts to turn into a sphere shape. The final part of this is magnetic north, and the Earth has a magnetic field, and on that magnetic field, we see the location like on a magnet where the north and south is orientated to is moving about and that's because the magnetic field of the earth is created by the movement in the iron nickel core of the earth and some fluids which are moving around in there so it changes over time and as part of that in our recent history the last 100 to 200 years we've seen magnetic north move from being in the northern part of Canada here and then it's been moving across in a kind of direction like this and so magnetic north is moving around as the fluids at the core of the earth which control the magnetic field are also moving around. So you need to check on your map the currency of the map and that's because maps from say 30 40 years ago will have magnetic north in a different location to its actual location today. When we apply the differences between true north and grid north and magnetic north on our map, we need to make some adjustments and that's called declination. So when I add my compass to the map, on this projection, the Mercator projection, my grid lines are gonna be running perfectly north and south and east and west, so across the map in a perfect square. But you can see on my compass, the magnetic needle is not pointing to north and if I move it sideways uh, along like this, it remains pointing to the one place. And that's because my magnetic needle of the compass is going to point towards the magnetic north of the Earth. And that is a location uh, up here in northern Canada. I need to account for the difference between my grid lines when I'm looking at a map that's in Australia and the direction which my magnetic needle is pointing to, which is over to the magnetic north. For me in Australia, I'm in Canberra, I have 13 degrees towards the east is the difference between magnetic north and grid north on my maps. And I have about 1.5 degrees as the difference between my grid north and my true north location. But we're not really gonna worry about that little difference because it doesn't apply in our navigation settings. The difference between my magnetic needle pointing to magnetic north and grid lines is the declination adjustment I need to make. If I were to take a bearing and then minus 13 degrees off the map, you can see that I've now aligned my grid north and my magnetic needle. So that's how that is working. If I'm pointing just on the land like this, and then I wanna add my information to the map, you can see that I have got the grid lines looking in the wrong spot. So I add 13 degrees, then that gives me the true bearing for the grid lines versus the magnetic needle. So that's all because I'm in Australia, and in Australia, we are to the east of the magnetic north. Depending on where you are in America, you might be to the east of it a little bit, or if you're on this side of America, you would be to the west. And certainly over in South America, you're going to be to the west of true north. And so then you're gonna to have to make the reverse adjustments. So here, So in the very simplest sense, we can use a compass to provide some direction. Here we have our compass. The magnetic needle is gonna to point towards north. And so I'm facing west. Just by looking at the magnetic needle, we can find some direction in the landscape. We need to combine this with our map techniques to work out where we actually wanna go and find the correct pathway through the landscape. So the next part of is to orientate the map using the compass. Just put my compass on top of the fence pole because I thought it would be an easy place where I could shoot. And I realized that the magnetism of the pole is actually 
greatly interfering with my compass needle and you can see it moves about 30 degrees there. This highlights the importance of and using your compass away from objects which might include uh, magnetism. So surprisingly a fence pole there did have magnetism in it even though it was uh, a wooden fence pole but the wires and things around it uh, have clearly provided a, a magnetic field. I'm going to put my compass on the map. It doesn't really matter where you are but the next thing is to line up the grid lines on the map with the orientation lines inside of the bezel. So now what I have is I've lined up the grid lines on the map with the lines inside our bezel, those orientation lines. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my map and compass together until I have my magnetic needle living inside of the directional arrow for our bezel or the shed. And so when Red Fred is lined up with the shed, then that's orientating the map with the magnetic field, which is around the earth, which is how we decide north. And so here, if I look up the hill, I just have a hill there and I can look to my left. I've got the track going along that way and the track heading off to my right hand side as well. And so that's pretty much exactly where the top corner of the base plate is on my map. And then I have the Karma Homestead just below there. So that way I have orientated myself using the compass to orientate the map position. So it's in the same location relative to north as what I'm looking at on the ground. I'm in some pine forest here and that's because your task for this video is to walk on track in a environment just using your compass and so pine forest is really good because the features are harder to distinguish because everything looks very uniform in a pine forest and so using your compass in this situation is ideal to hone your compass skills and make sure that you're using them effectively as we've looked at for orientating yourself using the compass in this video. In the next video we are going to be looking at taking compass bearings and triangulation and some of the more advanced features of our compass so check out that video over there and have a great outdoor adventure thanks for watching